We're back on transformations today, and uh, I want to talk a little bit before we get into our particular transformation for today, which is uh, rotations. I want to talk about some more general information about transformations. If you'll notice, each one of these sections that we've started, we've started with some general information about transformations. You need to know all of this general information. Put it together in one spot, look at it, take pictures of it, do whatever you need to to get this stuff together. Talking about transformations, if the pre-image and image, what's the pre-image? That's our original figure. What's the image? That's after the transformation. Pre is before the transformation, image is after the transformation. What's a transformation? Uh, it can be what? Reflection. What else? Translation. A rotation. And our dilation, it can be any of those, okay? Any change that we may do to that figure. If the pre-image and the image of a transformation have the same orientation of points, then that transformation is called a direct isometry. Okay, what's isometry mean? Yeah, it's one of those terms we have for general transformation. Isometry means that it maintains a congruence. Maintains a set of properties. You need to know those sets of properties. Number one, betweenness of points. Number two, collinearity. Angle measurement. Distance measurement. Maintains those four properties. If it does not maintain point orientation, then it is an indirect or opposite isometry. So if it maintains point orientation as well as those other properties, then it's known as a direct isometry. If it does not maintain point orientation, then it is an indirect or an opposite isometry. Well, what in the world does that mean? Well, let's look at some examples. Let's look at a translation. Translation, we're going to simply move it. Slide it, glide it, do something like this. Notice that A, B, C. If I start with A and go counterclockwise to the left, Guess what? I still have A prime, B prime, C prime. So the points are in the same order, in the same direction. This is a direct isometry. Let's look at a rotation. I have a triangle X, Y, Z. Notice X, Y, and Z. If I turn, go to the left, I have X, Y, and Z. Notice that I turned that triangle, and I now have X prime, Y prime, Z prime. But still, if I start with the X, and I go to the left, I have a Y, and I have a Z prime, just like I did on the original. That's known as maintaining point orientation. Now let's look at reflections. Remember, two types of reflection. We have point reflection, and then we have line reflection. So let's look at point reflection first. I have triangle L, M, and N. Notice again, if I go to the left, I have L then M, and then N. So let's reflect that across a point. Remember, when we reflect across a point, we're going across. So what happens? L is going to come across and be where we expect it. N is going to change what? From up to down. M is going from down to up. So let's look. If I go to the left over here, I have L, M, N. If I go to the left over here, I have L prime, M prime, N prime. So it maintains point orientation. So a reflection across a point will maintain point orientation, which means it is a direct isometry. But let's look at line reflection. Have H, J, K. Go to the left, H, J, K. Let's go over here. We reflect it across the line. Okay, let's start with H. I go to the left, I got K, and then I got J. Well, wait a minute. Over here, I've got H, J, K. Over here, I've got H, K, J. This does not maintain the orientation of the points. Those points have switched. So a reflection across a line is not a direct isometry. It's an indirect, or in this case, an opposite isometry. That's the definition of discussion on direct isometry and opposite isometry. Translations are going to be direct all the time. Rotations are going to be direct all the time. A reflection across a point which really is a rotation across 180 degrees. Reflection across a point will maintain that point orientation. Reflection across a line will not. All right? So, 
discussion, some new concepts on transformations called direct isometries and indirect isometries. You need to get those into your vocabulary and um, get those learned. Now let's talk about uh, another transformation, rotations. I have some definitions we need to talk about, some vocabulary words, so that we can begin to understand exactly what a rotation is. Yes, everybody knows what a rotation is. It's a turn. Okay, but there's some very precise meanings to this. Rotation is a transformation that turns every point of a pre-image through a specified angle in the direction about a fixed point. Okay? We have a fixed point and we're going to turn that image, that pre-image, around that point through some sort of angle. Now, the center of rotation is the fixed point of a rotation. In other words, from what point are we going to turn? There has to be a center, just like there's a center of a clock. There has to be a center. Okay? And the center of rotation is that fixed point that we refer to in the definition. Now the angle of rotation, what is the angle of rotation? That's the specified angle through which the pre-image is turned to create the image. It's measured in degrees. It can be anywhere between 0 and 360. Obviously if we go 360 we're right back to where we started from and we haven't really moved anything. Okay, so the angle of rotation. Direction of rotation, that's the direction the pre-image is turned to create the image. Now we can turn two directions. If we turn clockwise, that is to turn to the right, the direction the clock moves. So we can turn 60 degrees clockwise, that would be move it 60 degrees to the right. We can also turn it counterclockwise, CCW, counterclockwise, turn it to the left, the opposite direction the clock moves. So those of you that are used to digital clocks and don't understand what a clock looks like, look on the wall. And watch the second hand, the sweep second hand, and you'll understand which direction the clock moves. One, two, three, four terms, definitions you need to know. What is a rotation? Transformation turns every point of a pre-image to create an image through a specified angle and a direction about a fixed point. Center, that's the fixed point. Angle of rotation, it's a specified angle. It can be anywhere between 0 and 360. The direction of rotation is referred to as clockwise or counterclockwise in accordance with how a clock moves. Four terms that you need to know in order for us to talk about rotations and do problems. Now we're going to do a simple uh, sample rotation. The way you do a rotation is the same way whether it's on a coordinate grid or it's just on paper, okay? Uh, I'm going to use some instruments. I'm going to use a yardstick and I'm going to use a protractor for this. Three things we have to know about a rotation before we can even start. We have to know where the center is. What's the center of rotation? We have to know what the angle of rotation is going to be and we have to know what the direction is. So we've chosen that we're going to, the center of our rotation is going to be point P and here's point P. So we're going to rotate triangle ABC around point P. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to change the direction. We're going, to, we're going to rotate it 60 degrees. Well, what direction? Are we going to go clockwise? Are we going to go to the right? Or are we going to go to the left? Well, we're going to go counterclockwise, which means we're going to turn it to the left. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, the best way to do that is for us to draw some lines and then that way we can make sure we do this exact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from B to P. And then I'm going to draw a line from C to P. And then I'm going to draw a line from A to P. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure those and while I'm there, I'm just going to say A, P equals 18.5. Now let's measure B, P. Oh wow, B, P, dead on 11. And C, P, C, P equals 8.5.
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn those lines. Well, how do I turn those lines? Well, I have to go through a 60 degree angle. So let's go through a 60 degree angle on each one of those lines. Not too hard. I simply line up my protractor. I just say, I want to move this one 60 degrees. So here's my first one. Okay, and then I want to move this one 60 degrees. So there's my second one. And then I want to move this one 60 degrees. So here's my third one. Okay? Now, simply take those and mark them off. This one was our B1 because it's the first one over here. And how far was BP? It's 11. So I'm going to go 11 from there. Mark that. There's my new B. The next one is going to be my A. It's 18 and a half. Whoops, off the page here. Going to go up 18 and a half. I'm going to measure that, and there's my new A. My new C is at eight and a half. Comes down here along that 60 degree line. There's my new C. Okay? Now all I have to do is mark and draw the lines. So let's use a different color for this. This right here is going to be my B prime. This up here is going to be my A prime. This right here is going to be my C prime. That's what a 60 degree turn about point P would look like. Okay, let's draw our little lines that indicated where we're coming from. This right here, 60 degrees. Okay? Fairly simple to do. It does take some technique with a ruler and with a protractor. But basically what we're doing is we're drawing a line from P to every point on our original image. We're measuring those lines, those line segments, and then we're applying an angle to them, and we moved it to the left, which is counterclockwise. So around point P, so our center of rotation, our angle of rotation was 60 degrees. Our direction is counterclockwise or to the left. I suggest you look at this, you study it, watch what I do so that you can do this on test and on homework.